I want to talk about Seymour, which is your documentary that you made about this pianist named Seymour Bernstein, who lives in New York, and stopped performing. There's such themes of aging and time passing, and you know, I got the sense from that film that you feel like you're at this midpoint, and you're asking a lot of questions about, does the second half of my life have to be like the first? And I, I guess I wanted to ask you right off the bat, just what was the impetus for starting that film and doing it? I think you're absolutely right that, you know, here I am, was turning 40, and I'd always been the youngest at everything. You know, I, my self-image was that of a young person. You know, uh, when Dead Poets Society came out as 18, I was the youngest client at my agency. Right. You know what I mean? I was always the youngest. Oh, he made his Broadway debut at 21. Oh, he wrote a book at 24. I was just a kid, always. And that was my, and all of a sudden that wasn't true anymore. And I felt like, well, I wasn't allowed to be promising anymore. I, it was time to deliver, you know? And also, I thought that being an adult was gonna be easier than it is. It's really, I, I think I thought it was gonna work like this. You know, you work hard, you tell the truth, your aim is true, and you'll slowly build and get better and better and better. And life doesn't work on some slow, gradual ascent where every decision makes sense. You know, it, it, it was turning into much more of a slog where sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes twisted, Sometimes what you thought was a failure turned into success. Sometimes what you thought was a success turned into a failure. Right. And we live in a society where everybody's just like, well, are you making more money? Are you getting more success? I mean, what are you doing? And here I was having this trouble of judging where I was at in my life. And here I met this 87-year-old guy who seemed so happy. He wasn't eating himself alive with bitterness or greed or ambition or um, breaking his arm, patting himself on the back, you know. And I was immediately fascinated, you know, that he had this thing that he basically had come to feel that blind pursuit of success at his profession was detrimental to his development as a man. You know, he really talks about very simple, old-fashioned things of which are nice to hear, like, well, there is no happiness without meeting your responsibilities. People always want to talk that happiness is pleasure. Sure. Right? But it almost never is. What makes you happy is doing a good job, saying you're gonna do something, doing it. You feel good, a job well done. That's the, the real source of our self-esteem. And Seymour, looking at him, he knew exactly what I was talking about. You know, it ain't easy. And the, his, the thing he said to me when we were at dinner, when he met, is, is uh, I said, well, you know, I'm really struggling. You know? And he goes, good. Good, you might be onto something. Because, and he would go on to say, well, what, what's happened in every other time period of your life when something bad happened, when you suffered, what happened? Well, I guess I grew and I was like, yeah, right. So why would you be sad that something bad's happening now?